You have all been asking, surprisingly actually a lot of you, about apple butter and how to make it, what to do. I have a recipe on my website. So that is always a bonus because apparently it's hard to find recipes on these platforms, but it is super easy to make apple butter. And what are there plentiful of in the fall? Apples, go to a local apple orchard, pick some, find a farmer's market, or if you need to go to a grocery store just so you can have beautiful, delicious apple butter. So the idea of a fruit butter is that it is more dense and thick than a jelly or a jam or a preserve, and it's cooked all together and then blended so you have all the pulp and all the fruit and all that fiber in with it. So it's really delicious. It has that more kind of like just hearty texture and I love that. So in front of me, I have pretty much all it is. It's pretty simple ingredients. I have most of my apples in, what is this? A slow cooker, that's right. I am making this in a slow cooker because otherwise you cook it so long on the stove. And you can do it on the stove, but you're gonna have to babysit that thing all day because really the big thing with apple butter and the only thing that really takes time is what? The cooking it down. So what I'm doing is I just cut up my apples. I put them into quarters, took out the cores, which is all that seed, all that stem. And honestly, you know, I've made it before with the peel and without, guys. After it cooks so long, you don't notice the peel. You just keep going. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm leaving the peel on because it's a lot more simple. It's faster. And once it cooks literally for, get this, eight to 10 hours, I know, eight to 10 hours, then it all pretty much cooks to nothing and you blend it and so you don't even notice it. So that's why I'm doing it in a slow cooker. I'm getting it ready, as you can tell maybe with the lighting, at, in the evening before I wanna make it here. So I'm gonna let it cook all night long. That's the wonderful thing about this. Your house cannot smell more autumn-like. So there is the rest of my apples and I'm just gonna dump them right into my slow cooker. So this is a large slow cooker because that way I'm able to do them all. You could also split it in between two slow cookers, but the thing is it cooks down, it condenses, it cooks off a lot of that extra liquid, a lot of the water that's in apples. And so it really cooks down. It's not near that much when we're done. So to that, what do we add? Well, yes, we guys, please, we do add some sugar and it's gonna be brown sugar because what does that add? More molasses -y, caramel notes. I love that. I'm just lightly packing it in the measuring cup. Nothing too fancy here. And that's kind of like the best part about this recipe. Nothing too fancy. Anyone can do this at home. So after that, what do we need to put in? Some spices. And the first one, of course, is gonna be cinnamon. Cinnamon, you cannot go wrong. It's kind of the standout thing in apple butter. It is. Just a little bit of cloves. Cloves are one of those things that you want just a little bit because a little bit too much is a little bit too much and you can't go back from that. So I'm doing just a few cloves, but I definitely like that um, the aroma of the cloves with the cinnamon just really sets something off. Now, usually if I have it, I'll throw in one star anise pod. They're really pretty. It's like a whole pod of anise or anise, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to instead just put in a couple seeds. I know it sounds stupid, but they can be overpowering. So I'm just putting in a couple seeds, nothing too much here, and then they're just going to cook in with it. When you smell it on its own, it has that black licorice-like smell, but when it cooks with all these other spices, totally different. It brings out all the other notes and it just marries with them really well. I'm doing a pinch of salt, of course. It's a lot of sweetness going in there, so that kind of balances all out. And then I need some acid, so I'm gonna add some lemon juice. The acid just kind of wakes everything up, especially with apples and all the sweetness that's in there. It kind of just makes everything a little bit more bright. So I'm gonna put the other one in there too, and then this is, this is what I love about apple butter. This is it. So I do want to just lightly stir it. Nothing too, I mean, you can't really stir it that well because obviously it's just apples at this point. So I'm gonna kind of just more toss it around, get that sugar kind of in throughout. So I, I just set this on high and I'm gonna let it go on high. And I'm gonna let it go on high. Mine at the moment only lets me, it's probably a safety feature, which is good, but it lets me only set it for eight hours at a time. So I'm gonna set this to overnight for my eight hours. I'm gonna let it cook. In the morning, it probably won't be done because the thing is, the type of apple doesn't matter. Having a mixture of apples does. But if you go with really crispy apples, like a Honey Crisp, a Granny Smith, they take a lot longer to cook down and to break down. So softer apples can be better, but a mixture is better in general because you get those nuances of different flavors and all the different types of apple in there. So 
In eight hours, we'll check it. I'm gonna stir it, maybe if I think about it, once or twice. Let it cook down, stir it, and then we'll check back and we'll see how the apple butter's coming. That's all it is, guys. So I'm gonna put this on, let it cook. It's gonna smell amazing. And we'll come back. As you can see, this has cooked down tremendously. Do you remember when I filled this up? It was all the way at the top, and I said it's gonna condense, and guys, look at it. It is dark, which thus the color of apple butter. So what I did was it cooked all night, eight hours on high. I woke up, and there's a lot of liquid still on it. And so I took the lid off, kept it on high for another four hours, and then that really helped all that extra liquid to somewhat cook off, evaporate off, that's why the lid off. And now, all there's left to do, I turned it off, obviously, I'm just gonna blend it. This is kind of the best part of doing it in a slow cooker. It's hands off for the majority of it. Yes, for some of it, obviously, we're sitting here cooking it, but as you're mashing it, this is kind of the best way to know. You can even eat a piece and see, oh, well, it's extremely soft. So I'm just gonna ladle it into my blender container. So a high power blender, I will admit, in this case works really, really well. If you don't have an extremely high powered blender or are worried yours won't with the peel on it, maybe get all of that off, I would definitely in that case probably use a food mill and pass it through a food mill because that will help anything that is a little bit grainier not be put into the actual apple butter. So I'm gonna use in two batches just because sometimes when there's a little bit of heat still left in it, it can, be too much for a blender. So I am gonna put the lid on. Keep this area open. I should grab a rag. I grabbed a rag. Anytime you're gonna leave that little lid off on top of a blender, that lets the steam out so it doesn't blow up. <laughs> it can happen. You just kinda of wanna cover it with something so all those juices don't splatter out or something. I'm just gonna turn it on, on high, and get it really blended. So I want to check it. I want to see the consistency. I want to make sure everything is blended up well. You can see there was still steam, obviously. Look at that beautiful, though, thickness of it. Do you see that? Do you see, it's like, I can put my finger through it? Like, look at that. <laughs> really good. What I love is it's just that perfect marriage. It doesn't have way too much spice in it. Just enough cinnamon. You don't even notice the clove in it, but you get that, you get that undertone of a little bit of a spice. It's perfect. The, the anise, if you're worried about it, you don't notice it, it's just delicious. And what I love best, since we let that extra liquid or water cook off, this consistency is beautiful. That's exactly what I want, it really does. Mm, it tastes good. So at this point, you could can it. It's hot. You could put it into pint jars, jelly jars. You could put a lid on it put it into a water bath for 10 minutes and that's it. Or you could do what I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna put it into jars and I'm gonna freeze it. And now you're thinking, wait, glass jars? Yes, you can freeze glass. Just don't drop it on the concrete when you take it out. Obviously it would, actually that would break it either way. So I don't know why. Yes, you can freeze in glass. You just don't wanna overfill it. So I'm gonna pour it into these jars. Now, if you're saying, I've never had apple butter. Oh my goodness, you guys. In the Midwest, if you go to any type of fall fair, a church fair, a church auction, fundraiser, anything, there's big amounts of apple butter. Because we must have a lot of orchards, I guess. But, And I love it. And you use it on anything. Use it like a jam. Put it on bread. Put it on even your oats and make kind of like an oatmeal with like apple butter and cut apples. That would be delicious. You can also, I really like it with pork. It's delicious with some good pork chops and some maybe stewed apples on top with a little bit of apple butter because it kind of has that sweet savory. It's not overly sweet. You get that, mm, I know, I'm sorry, I need to stop. You get that apple-y, just like mm, savory flavor in it. So obviously let these cool off completely if you're gonna freeze them. Don't put them in hot. I like to let them cool off, then put the lid on and freeze them. I'm gonna blend the rest of this, finish up with this last jar. I'm gonna enjoy some apple butter. So I'm putting it in this other jar. I have a little bit left, so I'll have to get more jars for it. But I hope you guys can see that apple butter, especially in the slow cooker, extremely easy. You let it go overnight, you cook it a little bit longer, get that liquid down, and look, you have a beautiful consistency. It's even more rewarding if it's your apples. A few of these 
were mine. Most of them weren't. But guess what? This recipe is not only here, it is on my website. I've been making this for years. I think the recipe is from 2013. So it has been quite a few years that I have been making apple butter because it was way before that that I started making it and loving it. So check out the website, check out this recipe, make it, enjoy some local produce and share it around. That helps me, that helps you, it helps all of us. It's the symbiotic thing. So love it. I'm gonna go put this into the more jars. Let me know what you think. Or actually, I'm just gonna eat it. It is really good.